Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. I post my first Daoist introduction video a couple of weeks ago. I received a lot of positive feedback, so I'm going to continue posting more content on it. Thank you for the interest and the encouragement. Today, let us talk about the Xiu Dao, which roughly translates to Daoist meditation in English. Like I mentioned in my first Taoism related video, it is neither correct nor advisable for someone to practice Xiu Dao without any basic knowledge. What I am emphasizing here is that the term knowledge. In any study of practice, we need to have a specific knowledge of it, otherwise it is impossible to practice, even more so with Xiu Dao. In the West, the two main issues with the practice of Xiu Dao are insufficient information and incorrect translation. If you have read some Taoist book, you may already have experienced frustration from the jargons used in those books. Let me say it again. Literal translation of those books from Chinese to Western language only ends up confusing the reader. You need someone to explain the meaning and the context behind those terms. The situation is not too different in China either. Even though the language and the terms would be familiar, the usage of terms is often cryptic and prone to misunderstanding by the common folk. That is because in the ancient time, Taoist masters and scholars wanted to keep it a secret from the public since they believed this practice carried a special power and it should not be made freely available to the public. I have lived in the West for almost 20 years now. In that time, I have taught many people Xiu Dao. I have personally witnessed countless misunderstandings, misconsumptions, and misinterpretations of Xiu Dao knowledge caused by cultural and linguistic differences. This is why I believe that in order to practice Xiu Dao, before understanding its principle, practice, and the mystical aspects, we have to gain a certain level of necessary knowledge, or at the bare minimum, we should clarify some common concept and the theory in order to make sure that we speak the same language. I plan to introduce some very basic concept of Xiu Dao first. Then, gradually, I will introduce more practical topics. Please keep in mind that without these basic concepts, one will not be able to practice the art. Topics covered in today's video include First, Xiu Dao vs. Meditation Second, Xiu Dao vs. Qigong Three, some key terms explained Fourth, the objective of Xiu Dao in Taoism Five, practice time Six, takeaways So, let's get started Topic 1 Xiu Dao vs. Meditation I introduced in my first Taoism video that there is no Taoism equivalent term for the English term meditation. About a hundred years ago, people started using the term Jing Zuo, which translates to quiet sitting, since Jing means quiet and Zuo means sitting. Jing Zuo, however, still doesn't adequately describe Taoist meditation. In English, meditation may mean thinking, focus, and so on. So, people in the West falsely believe that Taoist practice primarily involves all of these exercises. Also, since in the West, People use the term meditation to describe this kind of exercise, activity, and practice. Then, by default, meditation became a term for this Taoist practice. On the contrary, 
In China, people use another term to describe the Western term meditation, which is Xiu Dao. Xiu means cultivate or repair, and the Dao means the path or other specific meaning depending on people's perception of Dao, such as enlightenment. So, its literal translation of this term is cultivate the Dao. We can see that the term Xiu Dao has much deeper and wider meaning since it is directly related to life, compared to the term meditation. We could say that meditation represents the practical aspect of this Taoism practice, but there are other areas and aspects of Xiu Dao beyond the practical representation of meditation. This is why I would like to remind you to think beyond the common term meditation when thinking about Taoist practice, which is Xiu Dao. To make this more obvious going forward, I will use the term Xiu Dao instead of Taoist meditation. Since I am transferring the knowledge from Chinese to English, I will provide translations of all the Chinese terms and prefer using English terms wherever possible. But certain terms, when translated to English, become harder to recognize. For example, most of you will agree that it's much easier to recognize to recognize the and remember the term xing yi and the ba gua compared to body mind boxing and eight trigram palm. The Chinese terms are in fact shorter, simpler, and a lot easier to distinguish from other martial arts. That's exactly why I will use Xiu Dao instead of Taoist meditation. Meditation can mean a lot of things to a lot of people, but Using the Chinese term Xiu Dao makes it a lot easier to, dis to distinguish this practice from other forms of meditation. It also does away with the false notion that Xiu Dao is simply another form of meditation. Xiu Dao is a lot more than that. Topic 2 Xiu Dao and Qigong. Qigong is another important practice for energy cultivation. In China, there are different categories of Qigong based on philosophical foundations and benefits provided by it, including Taoist Qigong, Buddhist Qigong, Confucian Qigong, Medical Qigong, and Martial Qigong. Since we have Taoist Qigong so very often that people think Qigong is just another name for Taoist meditation, or that meditation and Qigong are the same thing. What do you think about it? Well, Qigong is not meditation at all. Let me explain. Qigong, as one of the traditional practices, especially in Taoism, has been popular for thousands of years. Its popularity in both historical and modern times is on account of people discovering its health benefit. For example, around the 1980s, just a few years after the end of the Cultural Revolution, people in China were actively looking for some activities that could improve their quality of life and which also possessed cultural and philosophical aspects that they could practice in addition to the conventional political system. Qigong naturally became the top choice. Back then, there were tens of millions if not all the people in China practicing Qigong. It was so popular that even I thought that Qigong was the only way to improve ourselves. Maybe other people were more fanatic than I was. Many so-called Qigong masters emerged and many new styles of Qigong have, have had been created around that time. Of course, many of them include both practice and their founders were just fraud. This period lasted less than 10 years and eventually things 
returned to normal. Fortunately, I followed some great Qigong masters such as Yang Meijun and Pang Heming, among others. I was very lucky because my family could give me valuable guidance in identifying a good style and a good teacher among many. A majority of whom were fraud. The reason behind the Qigong fanatic period, a term commonly used after that historical event, had a deep social political background. I will share some interesting stories with you in future, many of which are downright hilarious. I hope it will not happen in the West. Now, let's come back to the differences between Qiu Dao and Qigong. The reason I said they are totally different practices is that the fundamental concepts as their guiding principles are different. Xiu Dao applies the static method in practice, while Qigong applies the dynamic method in practice. Let me explain. Qigong practice involves physical movements. Of course, there are static postures in Qigong practice such as normally in the beginning and ending part of each routine, but the majority of the practice consists of different body postures and movements. Those movements are dynamic compared to the static approach used in Xiu Dao. Not only the physical aspect, but also, and more importantly, the mental aspect. Mentally, Xiu Dao uses the static mind instead of a dynamic one. Static here means that in Xiu Dao, one should try to let the mind get into a static state, instead of visualization since visualization is considered a dynamic activity. Focus on concentration and visualization are all considered as actions of the mind, which in Tao's terms is equal to physical movement. The mind matters, means, meaning that we have to set our mind to the right state, the static state, not the dynamic state, or it would not be called Xiu Dao. Of course, there are different techniques involved in maintaining the static state, but it still follows the principles of Xiu Dao, or static state of being. To summarize it, even though there are similarities between Qigong and meditation in terms of posture and benefits, but any dynamic approach such as physical movement and active focus used in Qigong is fundamentally different from the practice used in Xiu Dao, which is the static approach in general. This is why Qigong is not a form of meditation. Topic 3. Some key terms explained. In the interest of time, I will only talk about two terms in today's video. First, Xian Tian and Hou Tian. I have briefly introduced these two terms in my previous martial art videos. In Xiu Dao, these two terms carry a deeper meaning. It is worthwhile to clarify them first. In the term Xian Tian, Xian means before and Tian means heaven, so people often translate Xian Tian to before heaven. I prefer to translate to primordial. In the term Hou Tian, Hou means after, so people often translate Hou Tian to after heaven. I prefer to translate it to postmodial. Let me explain it a bit further. In Taoism, the classic theory is that a human being's life starts from the embryo or the embryotic period. Taoism believes the, that energy given by the parents before the child's birth is called primordial. Energy received after the birth through different means is called postmodial. The spirit of soul starts its function 
at the moment of the physical birth. The moment of the birth is the key differentiator between the two stages. Energy received from the parents will only be consumed after birth and one will only receive postmodal energy without practice. This is a fundamental belief in Taoism, which is used to guide all further practice. In English, modal means existence. So, in my opinion, primordial and postmodal are better translations of Xian Tian and Hou Tian. Please remember going forward, the goal of any Tao's practice is to nourish repair and improve the primordial energy through a series of specific activities. It starts from postmodal action and eventually benefits the primordial energy level. Second, Shun, Ni. Another pair of interesting terms. Shun means forward, downstream, while Ni means backward, upstream, or Reverse flow. In Taoism, Shun Ni is an important concept. There are two approaches in terms of energy and its transformation. Taoists believe, first, nature generates the heart, heart generates the mind, mind generates emotion, and emotion generates illusion. This is the Shun approach or the human way of being. At the same time, Taoists also believe return to emotion by filtering illusion, return emotion to mind, gather the mind to stabilize the heart, return the heart to place of nature. This is the Ni approach or the immortal way of being. In practice, Taoists always use the reverse flow approach as the guiding principle. I recommend you revisit this part if it's your first time listening to this. By the way, the terms illusion, heart, mind, and nature have specific meanings in Taoism and should not be confused with the common English interpretations. I will discuss them ter this term in future. Topic 4. The Objective of Xiu Dao in Taoism Xiu Dao is the main method for Taoist practitioners to achieve the Great Tao, including self-liberation and self-ownership. Spirit in Taoist practice means the spirit in our body, not the divine spirit. Immortality means to achieve longevity physically and our spirit can be merged with Tao, or be part of the universe. Therefore, we can see that Tao's practice is not only a physical practice system, but also includes content related to Tao's philosophy and principles. At the same time, a philosophical Tao's belief system is based on practice. An individual improves oneself through practice including both tangible and intangible aspects. By understanding this, we should know that to achieve the greater Tao or be part of the Tao in the universe, Tao's practitioners have to adjust their attitude, lifestyle, and apply some specific method to achieve the goal. Topic 5. Practice Time In my martial art videos, I use the term demonstration for this section. But in Xiu Dao, I prefer to use practice time since it is your time to practice. Today, I will show you a way to close the eyes in the context of Xiu Dao. Sure, it sounds silly when I say this, but what I'm actually pointing to is the question. What to do along with the physical act of closing your eyes? In the early stage of practice, it will be no different than merely closing the eyes. With time and regular practice, 
you will reach the stage where you can gather your vision inward while you close your eyes. My recommended approach to practice goes like this. First, adjust your body structure and make the mind ready for practice. Keep your eyes open while you do this. Then, when your mind is getting ready for practice, first extend your gaze further and then gradually withdraw it until your eyes are closed. Also, visualize the idea that your mind is absorbing the surroundings into your body. Then, readjust your body structure and make sure you are relaxed. So, please practice the eye closing exercise each time before practicing Xiu Dao O Qi Gong. Topic 6 Takeaways First, Xiu Dao means cultivation of the Dao, is an umbrella term to collectively describe Dao's meditation and some other practice. Second, Xiu Dao is different from Qi Gong since Qi Gong is the dynamic approach, while Xiu Dao is the static approach. 3. Two pairs of important terms have been introduced, including primordial and postmodal and shun and ni concepts, which are used to guide Xiu Dao practice. 4. Objective of Xiu Dao can vary individually. However, the ultimate goal is to merge with the greater Tao. 5. An eye-closing method, which acts as a prep prepping steps for Xiu Dao or Qi Gong has been introduced. Thank you for watching, see you next time and happy practice!